Good morning and welcome to New Vision Church where loving God and loving people is our passion. My name is Pastor Glenn, I'm the lead pastor here. Uh, as you can see, I'm on my own on the platform. Uh, we have uh, curtailed our services for this weekend. We did have someone diagnosed with COVID uh, last week, so we, to be safe, we've allowed the uh, precautionary period uh, for just not to use our facility until we reopen uh, a week today, which is Sunday, uh, November 22nd, where we'll be live streaming at 9 a.m., but also being able to physically gather at 9 a.m., as well as our second service at 11 a.m. Uh, I want to just uh, emphasize for you to go to our website, uh, newvisionchurch.live. On the website, particularly on the homepage, you'll find uh, up-to-date information with regards to our church, activities, what is happening. Please uh, like our Facebook page on the main uh, homepage. You can scroll down to the bottom. Also, if you would subscribe, please, to our YouTube channel. We're very close to 100 subscribers, so we'd like for you to do that again on the homepage. And if you'd like to give, uh, as many are not gathered, obviously, this weekend, and you want to give financially, then we do have opportunity again on our website for you to give financially. So we thank you very, very much for that. Uh, I have a couple of other things just to mention, and then I'm going to actually pray. Uh, I'd love to just lead us in worship. Uh, with a couple of worship songs, and then I've got a message that I want to speak to you this morning. Uh, but first of all, this week, as I've said, no meetings taking place in the building till Sunday. And again, check out the website with regards to that. Uh, let's just close our eyes for a moment. Uh, if you would do that, I'm going to get my guitar on and I'm going to pray. So just bow your heads with me if you're watching at home throughout the world. I know you're watching this morning. Uh, from the UK to Spain, Germany, other parts of the United States. Just bow your head with me as uh, we pray together and welcome the Holy Spirit. Father, we want to thank you to, today. We're in your house and that we're here to worship you. Well, by being in your house, it means that we're in your presence, because in your presence there is fullness of joy. So we just pray you would come, Holy Spirit, uh, despite our circumstances, despite what we're going through, uh, the challenges of life, the unpredictable nature of life, that you would just breathe your ruach upon us even now. So Father, in Jesus' name, as we get ready to worship you, the Father who loves us with an everlasting love. Where you tell us in Romans 8 that we can say, Daddy or Abba, we can know what you truly like because you're an amazing God. So just come in the stillness. Help us to put away every distraction, every obstacle. Help us to fix our heart and mind upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love to worship Jesus, whether I'm gathered in a crowd of thousands of people or on my own in a hotel room. Uh, this is one of my favorite songs and maybe you're watching this morning and you don't know Jesus, you've got a distorted picture of who God is and what he's like. So I ask you just to listen to the words of this song and allow God to speak to you. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> Yeah. 
Many searching for answers Far and wide Lacking We are all searching for answers Only you provide us We know just what we need Before we say a word
Even they which who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am, says Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, verse 9, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island which is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard, uh, heard behind me a loud voice as of the trumpet, go miss them, saying, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, and girded about his chest with, gold, with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, and in, in a refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went the sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength or brilliance. And when I saw, I fell at his feet as dead. But he said to me, uh, he said, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys, don't miss that, of hell and death. Write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, the things which will take place after this, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches may the lord bless the reading of his word first thing i want to highlight is verse 10 it talks about the voice of a trumpet we're going to be looking at that next week with these prophetic trumpets, these seven prophetic voices where God has got something special, unique to say to his churches, but also a wedding season for the times that we're going through. We're going to look at that next week. Verse 18 says, Jesus has the keys of hell and death. And he's given those keys not only to Peter, but to his church for us to have the keys of the kingdom. Where he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, keys to unlock doors, to take us on pathways. That will be the last part of what we'll look at next week. And then verse 1 is what we're going to focus on today. Which is this, he's about showing us, revealing things to us that are going to take place shortly. I'll say that again. Showing or revealing things to us that will take place shortly. We need to pay attention in other words. Now if you're like me, despite the uncertainty, particularly in America, with the election that is still not finalized, uncertainty has all these ramifications of feeling uneasy, uh, unsettled, not knowing what the future is. But God's purposes, listen carefully, have not changed. When Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, when he says, I know the plans I have towards you, Jeremiah 29, 11, plans not to harm you, but to give you, listen, a hope and a future. It's a time to press through and keep our eyes on Jesus and keep firm on our, his foundation because his ways are past fighting out. His ways haven't changed. He is changeless. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, despite the instability he is steadfast. He's an anchor. He's a foundation that we can put our faith and truth in. There's always going to be this dichotomy or this paradox between righteousness. As many have been praying, the Bible says righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is reproach to any people. It's righteousness always versus lawlessness. That's the pendulum swing. That's the two paradoxes that we are wrestling for, for good versus evil. And we need to stand for righteousness. 
this morning, the shofar, which is this uh, trumpet of God that goes forth, that is pivotal to the people of God. It's the shofar from heaven is still sounding. And don't forget, it's got this twofold aspect to it. First and foremost, God is blowing the shofar to call his people to himself. It's the prophetic sound that he is after at this hour. It's always drawing close to Jesus because when we draw close to him, the Bible says he will draw near to us. That's when we hear his voice. That's when we feel God's heartbeat. So it's drawing close to him. Secondly, the shofar is to empower and to send God's people into battle. Many of us get caught up in the flesh. We get so drawn into the natural things. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Our battle is not against human beings. We have a common enemy. He's near the sin. He's alive and well on planet Earth. And his activity is increasing. But God, through Jesus, has won the victory. Don't forget this. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Because Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. We enter into his victory. We're seated with him in heavenly places. So as Jesus is in your home, in your life, in this church, he's walking, he's listening. And again, always he's asking the same question over and over again. Where is my heart? Where is your heart towards God? Are you setting your affections on things above or things of the earth? Let him who has ears to hear the refrain after each seven churches. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So let's walk through these seven churches. This is, as I said, an overview of revelations. Uh, and the first one is the church in Ephesus. Uh, Revelation 2 verses 1 through 7. Again, I'm not going to read these passages. We've been reading over them. Please read them for next week as we will walk in more detail through these. But we're going to look at these first four, Smyrna, uh, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, and Thyatira. We'll walk through them. Ephesus, as we learned before, was a church that, if you read the book of Ephesians, was commended for its great love. But it became, listen, careless. This church is a careless church. And there's many Christians, there's many churches that have become careless or complacent. Verse 4 says, despite the commendation, despite the many good things these people had done, they had fallen away from the most important thing, which is, you have forsaken, says Jesus, your first love. A church that 20 times in the book of Ephesians had been commended and celebrated for great love had lost the most important love which is Jesus himself. It's the most important principle of the Christian life. Jesus uh, uses this word in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just as he's speaking to the church here and commending them, he said, nevertheless, I have this against you. And Jesus, when he's struggling in anguish to go to the cross, he says, Father, if it's possible, and we always try to get out of doing things the way that God wants us to do them perfectly. And Jesus, in his humanity, struggled with that. If it's possible, Father, take this cup from me. Then he uses that same phrase. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And God brings each one of us, well, the people in Ephesus, he reveals that heart condition. To obey is better than sacrifice. Not my will. Will that be you this morning? Secondly, the church in Smyrna, Revelation 2, 8 through 11, this is not careless, but it's the crown church. Here there's not a rebuke, there's a sense of these people are walking in humility and therefore God has placed his blessing upon them. The warning in verse 10 is do not fear, and fear is consuming so many of us in this day still, week in, week out, day in, day out, as we come up to the end of the year, who would have guessed this pandemic would go on so long? And so much fear still gripping the hearts of people. God is preparing us as his church to understand that, as Jesus said, don't fear those who can kill the body. Rather, fear God who has the power to cast both body and soul either into hell or into heaven. Take us to heaven. Talks about suffering. It's a concept that we don't 
uh, think about in the Western world, certainly not in America, but it's a concept that we have to come to terms with, indeed are coming to terms with now. Several of you watched as we uh, saw a video clip several weeks ago about the church in China and about an American who visited there and talked about the, the level of suffering and sacrifice that Chinese Christians go through and it's normative for them to travel 13 hours on a train, to sit on wooden floors for five days from 8 o'clock in the morning or 5 in the evening non-stop because there's such a passion, such a hunger. Memorizing scripture. Where did you learn to memorize scripture? And the response is, in prison. Suffering, the Bible says, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will have some sort of persecution. And the Crown Church, the best church out of these, was highlighted for that because they found greater dependence on Jesus. Thirdly, the church in Pergamos, Revelation 2.12, uh, through uh, to the end of the chapter, the compromising church, the compromising church, they compromised. Verse 14, it talks about the doctrine, don't miss this, of Balaam. Bible warns us in Timothy that we should uh, be careful because sound doctrine is so important. People won't endure sound doctrine. And here there was false doctrine in the church. The doctrine of Balaam was this. It was trying to hire out God's services or pay for God's services. And that was abhorrent to God. It still is. And we see uh, things that are even getting exposed in the church today that are a form of this same spirit, this, this false doctrine where there's manipulation, there's control, there's ulterior motives to uh, prosperity and to trying to get money and to do things for selfish ambition, selfish gain. Thyatira, Revelation 2, uh, again, verses 18 to 29. Pergamos was verse 12 to 17. Here it's the corrupted church. They've been infiltrated. Verse 20 talks about you allowed that prophet, false prophet as Jezebel to seduce my people. And there's lots of seduction going on today. And that's why sound doctrine, that's why discernment, that's why standing as gatekeepers, watching and waiting and being proactive to protect God's people as a pastor. But all of us as sons and daughters are our brother's keeper. We've got to watch for one another that we don't get drawn away in these days of false teaching. You allow Jezebel, verse 20. We allow. And part of, listen carefully to me, the reason we allow these things is that we don't elevate and we don't uh, emphasize the authority of the Word of God. We accommodate because we allow the world's ways. We allow other thoughts and persuasions to make things okay, to justify what the Bible says is sinful and say, well, it's not that bad. Just let it go. And this is what was happening with Jezebel, sexual seduction. 2 Timothy 3.16 is a pivotal verse. We all know John 3.16, but 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, God's Spirit, all scriptures being given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, that the man and woman of God might be complete in every good work, lacking nothing. So we've got to stand on God's word. I like a quote that I heard. And while the Bible has got different language and imagery from poetry to historical literature, to parables, to apocalyptic literature, literature, generally speaking, God says what he means. If the liberal sense makes good sense, look for no other sense, lest you come up with nonsense. I'll say this because it's even more pivotal. If you truly, consistently want to follow the life and example of Jesus, then think about what his attitude was and his worldview. It was a biblical worldview. His attitude to scripture was, it is written. He brought God's perspective by quoting constantly out of the Old Testament. And we have to take his example literally and say the Bible says, or Jesus says, in God's word, in the Bible, following those things. Secondly, these other three revelations, the other three churches, 
Sardis, which is verses, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The feeble church, the feeble church, again, unstable, vulnerable. Verse 2 says, be watchful and strengthen those things that remain. I'll say that again, be watchful. It's a time more than ever to be watching, to be waiting, to be looking, to be asking, what is God saying? What is going on? What are the scriptures saying? To be dwelling in the Bible, to be like the Bereans in the book of Acts, searching the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. And then strengthening, encouraging, being a Barnabas to one another. When we see people drifting, as many are falling away to bring them back. So you need to connect, be in your Bible every day, be in community, be in fellowship, be connected with the body. This election is revealing a lot of different things in the hearts of people, particularly in the hearts of God's people. And what God is showing us, a lot of us are surprised at, including me. Hey, I didn't know this was in me. I'm not quite as sanctified as I thought I was. And the question to ask as God is revealing our hearts is, how does this reflect on Jesus? How does this reflect on the redemptive purposes of God? Jesus had a mission. It was very simple. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. People's eternal destiny is at stake. Don't forget that. So, so important. The church in Philadelphia, Revelation 3, 7 through 13. This is the faithful church. This is the faithful church. This is the faithful church. A little strength, verse 8, it says. You haven't denied, even when you feel like giving up and throwing in the towel, they stood firm, even with the strength, just like a mustard seed. Jesus said, if you are faith as a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds, you can speak. When we have God's resources, when we're holding on to him, just as the Bible says, one that will chase a thousand and two ten thousand, we can do exceedingly abundantly above, the Bible says, all we can ask and think because of the power, God's power that works in us, works in us. A little strength, I would deny they stood strong. It was out of a hopefulness, a posture of desperate dependence on Jesus. They were able to recognize their true state before God and acknowledge his light and his perspective and respond to that, to get that supernatural love. And then lastly, as I move into a conclusion, near the seer, uh, Revelation 3, 14 to 22, the foolish church, we looked at this a couple of weeks ago, verse 40, Jesus is saying, I'd rather you were hot or cold, but because you were lukewarm, not palatable, hard for me to take. I will spit or spew you out of my mouth. And this church and this truth more than any of the other six previously is so, so important. When we are in love with Jesus, when he's our first love, we are consumed with him. We're on fire for him. But when we look well, we know good. It's time, listen to me, for the church to arise God is calling her forth prophetically with this trumpet call to be Jesus to the world around us. Remember those times when you first became a Christian? How in love you were with Jesus. How easy it was to read the Bible, to get up and to pray, to go to four or five different activities because you had such a hunger and a thirst and a desire for God. But you've grown cold. You've drifted. You've grown weary. You've become lukewarm. You've lost your first love. It's time to arise. It's time to come to yourself like the prodigal son. To ask the question like he did. Hey, what was it like before? I'm going to do anything God asks to get back to being in love as the Father is waiting for you and he's watching for you to return to your first love. To be on fire again for Jesus. Not to worry about what people think, but to be consumed with what God thinks about you. That his declaration of well done, thou good and faithful servant is so precious to you. That him who has ears to hear. In conclusion, this is the first step. It's 
Jesus revealing to each of these churches, revealing to you and to me what the root issue is. The next step is God's voice to speak. It's the trumpet call that calls us to action. It gives greater revelation and clarification. And then next, he gives us the keys to do what he's asking us to do. Next week, we'll look at both of those things as we walk, as he speaks, as we take the action he's calling us to take. As he blows the shofar and calls us to himself and sends us out to be the people he's called us to be, just like Jesus. Heaven's clarion call. It's coming loud and clear to the church in the earth. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Lawlessness, Jesus warned, is going to abound in the last days. We need to stand, we need to contend for righteousness. As we get ready to pray, we need to have a heart like David. The Bible says, he is a man after God's own heart. And he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there's any wicked way within me. It takes brokenness, humility, surrender. Close your eyes and ask you to do and pray that very prayer even now. Humble yourself while every eye is closed. Those watching, those listening, wherever you're listening, don't miss this moment where God is speaking. It's a call to humility. It's a call to surrender. It's a call to, Lord, I need you desperately. Search my heart. Show me any wickedness in me. And why every eye is closed, while the Holy Spirit is showing you things. Again, don't miss this is the voice of God. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart and life. Whatever he's shown you, say sorry. Give it to him. Put it upon the altar. Surrender it at the cross. Father, I pray that you would seal these things in our hearts. Lord, that as we gather again next Sunday and we look at and listen to these trumpet calls, these prophetic trumpet calls that you want to speak to us as we pick up the keys, the seven keys of the kingdom that will unlock your future for each one of us. May we press in in faith, anticipation, and in obedience. All is Lord, do it for your glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to go to our website, uh, newvisionchurch.live, for all information regarding New Vision Church and our vision and our activities and what's happening. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next Sunday, both physically and online, either in the 9 o'clock service or the 11 o'clock service. We are praying for you. We love you. Feel free to email us. We have a guest card as well on our website. If you've got prayer requests, we want to be able to partner with you and just pray for you and make sure that you are walking in God's best. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Bye.